Your, your Eminence, Sevasmiotate, thank you so much for your inspiring words, but thank you for the leadership you have uh, provided to the Greek Canadian community. Your journey truly has been remarkable. Thank you so much for everything you've done. And Vasiliki, thank you for uh, hosting this uh, event. And uh, Justin, you were right, because I had an opportunity to give a short uh, interview. And she certainly treated me with the necessary firmness. <laughs> there, were no, there were no easy questions. But uh, you were right, Justin, when you pointed out that you uh, wear your Greek-Canadian heritage very proudly on your sleeve, as all of you do. So thank you so much for hosting today's event. And to my, to my good friend, uh, the Prime Minister of Canada, uh, Justin uh, Trudeau, uh, you're right to point out that it was your father um, who brought over to Canada the last Greek Prime Minister. It was just the wrong Prime Minister. He should have brought over <laughs> Konstantinos Mitsotakis and not Andreas Sapandre. <laughs> but I'm so happy. I'm so, I'm so happy to, to be with you here today to celebrate Independence Day. And indeed, it is the first time that I have decided to celebrate uh, Greek National Independence Day outside Greece. Normally, I'm in Athens at the big military parade. But this year, uh, I decided to make an exception. I decided to be with you here in Canada. And boy, was this the right decision. And indeed, uh, this is uh, an important day um, for, for Greeks, but it is also, I think, an important day for all freedom-fighting nations, because it is probably worthwhile reflecting exactly what happened 203 years ago when uh, the Greek nation rose up against the all-powerful Ottoman Empire and against all odds managed to win its freedom. And this freedom it has defended for more than two centuries. And through the ebbs and flows of uh, history, through triumphs uh, and uh, disasters, Greece has progressed. It has moved in the right direction. It was always with Canada on the right side of history. And, uh, and part of our Part of our history is uh, also the history of emigration. It is the history uh, of those uh, Greeks in difficult times, your parents, your grandfathers, who decided uh, to leave Greece in search of a better future. And many of those decided to make Canada their second home. And I think they chose wisely, because you have indeed progressed you have become part of this great nation, but you have also kept alive your Greek heritage, your regional heritage. It is such a pleasure to be able to see all the dancers with all their regional costumes. And yesterday, at this lovely parade in Montreal, I saw a vibrant Greek community, proud of its heritage, but also proud of being Canadian. And what Canada has done uh, to incorporate not just the Greek community, but all national communities into this beautiful country while making sure that they maintain their national heritage, cherish their roots, celebrate their history, is truly a remarkable story. So I pay tribute to all of those who are present here today, uh, who keep Greece uh, in your heart, but uh, sing, you know, both national anthems with the same uh, vigor and with the same enthusiasm. Yours is truly a remarkable, a remarkable story. And, <laughs> and when I reflect on, on the progress that Greece has, uh, has recently uh, made, uh, I should point out that we also went through a very difficult period during the second decade 
of the 21st century, when, es when essentially the country went bankrupt, it had to go through multiple bailout programs. It was considered by many and for many years the black sheep of Europe. And when we took over, we had a very clear plan in 2019 to restore sustainable growth, to create jobs, to lower taxes, to make Greece an investor-friendly country. And I think to a great extent, we have succeeded in that mission. But what is probably most important for me What is probably most important than me, and this means more than all the statistics and all the GDP numbers and all the unemployment figures, is what people tell me abroad. Σας ευχαριστώ που μας ξανακάνατε υπερήφανους για την πατρίδα μας. Thank you for making us again proud of being Greek. And this is the biggest reward. It's the biggest reward for, uh, uh, for me and, uh, and my team. And today, uh, in Toronto, I had a chance to meet with uh, leaders of the uh, Canadian business uh, community. Many Canadian companies have already invested in, uh, in Greece. They've been very successful uh, in doing so. I am sure that as a result of this trip and uh, as a result of me and my team talking more about the economic success of Greece, we will be able to further strengthen the adjust in our economic ties, our trade ties, our investment flows, convince more Canadian companies to be part of the Greek success story, but also why not convince more Greek businesses to invest in Canada, because maybe not many of you know that there is a, a Greek company that is currently interested in developing the largest photovoltaic plant in Canada, $1.2 billion of investment. This is also testimony to Greek companies being more extrovert, investing more uh, abroad, and further strengthening this uh, amazing partnership. And of course, there are many things that bind us together. Fighting the challenge of climate change is one of them. Prime Minister mentioned that we both, um, uh, both our countries went through catastrophic wildfires last year. We agree that we need to invest more, not just in long-term mitigation effort, but also in short-term adaptation measures, and that is the reason why we chose to place our trust again in Canadian water bombers. We are purchasing seven of those who will be constructed by the Havilland right here in Canada. And an initiative funded partly by the European Union, and this is only the first order of 24 in total, which will be purchased by five European countries in order to create a pool of resources that we can share also during the difficult summer periods. But of course, with uh, Canada, we also cooperate on other issues. We are faced with, as Justin said, with momentous uh, challenges. For us in Europe, it is so painful to realize that war has returned to the continent. You're still you know, further away, protected by uh, the Atlantic Ocean, but what has happened uh, in, in Europe was inconceivable five years ago. Yet now we are faced with a war of aggression, and it is imperative for all Western liberal democracies to side by side, to stand side by side, defend the rules-based international order, send a clear signal that no violation of uh, international borders by force can be tolerated. This is the reason I was in Ukraine, Justin was in Ukraine. We stand by the Ukrainian people in their fight to defend themselves and fight for their freedom. And of course, the other challenges we face is how do we make our democracies stronger? We know something about democracy because uh, it was the ancient Athenians who invented this so unique concept two and a half thousand years ago that at the end of the day, it is no king, no emperor, no pharaoh who rules over people, but it is people themselves who take the decision to rule themselves and take their future into their own hands. And liberal democracies are facing challenges these days. They're facing challenges from uh, disinformation, misinformation. The war against fake news is a war that we all need to fight together. The war against deep fakes, which are coming, will be part of our 
um, and next elections is something which requires a global response, us working together but also teaming up with the big technology companies and making them also responsible for protecting the integrity of our democratic process. But of course, at the end of the day, democracy, and let me conclude with this remark, is about participation. The more people participate in the democratic process, the greater the legitimacy of uh, the election results. And this is important because for those of you who actually have a right to vote in Greece, we manage to do something which is very, very important. For many decades, I remember I studied in the, uh, in the United States for seven years. I've been very close to the um, uh, American diaspora. There was always one request. Why do we have to return to Greece in order to be able to vote? Well, that has changed. You can vote in the next European election by posting in your ballot. So if you're interested, please register. and participate in these elections. It is important for us to make this project a success, and I am sure that this will happen, and we will continue. We will continue to support the diaspora and strengthen the ties between the motherland and those of you who are going through great effort to make sure that you educate your children, your grandchildren, that your children speak uh, the language. Uh, uh, I full respect to what the local communities, both in Montreal and in Toronto, are doing. You really run extremely well-organized uh, schools. Now we also have uh, more technological tools at our disposal. There is a great tool called Stylinica, which was actually developed um, by Simon Fraser University that allows um, uh, children or adults to learn uh, Greek uh, remotely through a very sophisticated uh, computer uh, interface. So we will uh, continue to stand by you. We have, for the first time, uh, a national strategy for our diaspora. And uh, our diaspora is uh, such, a incredible, such an incredible asset. And uh, let me conclude by uh, a remark. I thought, I thought about this while I was doing a fireside chat um, over lunch. And uh, uh, um, Mr. Nanos, who uh, interviewed me, asked me a question, what would you like your legacy to be you know, when, you, when you retire? I can tell you, as active politicians, we very rarely think about those things. Huh? <laughs> uh, we, we have enough, we have our hands full with, with day to day management. But I thought that maybe the best legacy would be to have a country where young people never ever are forced to leave the country by necessity and will only leave the country by choice. This is a Greece I envision, and this is a Greece we're all working towards. So again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your engagement. Zito Zito Peradas.